testimony you're about to give will be the truth? Absolutely. State your name, your address, and person, please. My name is Stuart Scott. Um, my address is 2801-N2 Lockheed Road, Honolulu, 96816. One of perhaps the last remaining pocket of ag land in the downtown area. First, a uh, gentleman came before me. Uh, I'll make a footnote that possibly the reason for the absence of the hopefully now uh, uh, testifiers at this point may be in, in large part because they are paid to be here. They are given the day off or half the day off, and they have to get back to work. So again, it emphasizes the point that it's dollars of the fighting uh, conscience in, in my view of the what we're, what we're looking at. Um, I wanted to testify today because two days prior to today, there was a briefing at the state capitol um, called by uh, Senator Mike Gabbard. Uh, Cynthia Thielen was there, and she was probably the most active bes beside Mr. Gabbard, um, Senator Gabbard. And there were four people who testified. First was Chip Fletcher from UH, and the, the uh, session was about climate change. And it was the state coming or up getting an update on what the, the status is. What are we looking at with climate change? Um, and Chip Fletcher's, uh, Dr. Fletcher's testimony was, uh, again, informative and shocking. Um, the numbers were medium to long term. By the climate change is slow moving in, in human terms and very fast in geologic terms. But they talk about by 2050 and by 2100 what will happen. But nobody talks beyond that. Um, Representative Geeland asked each of the four people who gave their briefings, how about agriculture? And the answers, generally speaking, were not uh, encouraging. Um, those who had specific answers, who, who, those who did not say, we haven't considered that yet. Um, but uh, the, the feeling that one in the audience got is that agriculture will be severely challenged by the best available information presented to the, the House of Representatives and the, the Senate of the state of Hawaii, agriculture will be severely challenged in the coming decades. Um, again, they talk about 2050 and 2100, but climate change is always tracking faster impacts, a ramping up of impacts that are faster than the scientists predict, because science by needs must be conservative in their predictions. So again, I will ask you to please consider the legacy, the seventh generation, they say, in the uh, American, Native American tradition. Consider the impact of your decision, not just for today or tomorrow or for the next 10 years, but losing that farmland to, to concrete, to a subdivision, is forever. It's an extinction of, of 1,500 acres. We're told they'll haul away the soil, as they've done in the neighboring Hawaiian homelands development, and they'll bring in crushed coral, which supports concrete foundations and roads much better. Um, that will be it for that. I'll call it 6,000 acres. I'll call it as it, as it should be called, that 6,000 acre equivalent of productive land. Thank you very much. Parties, questions? Dr. Dudley? Um, Mr. Scott, you've been to Durban, South Africa, as a representative of the United Nations. Could you tell us about that since we've seen you last year? Yes. Um, I, every, once a year, the UN holds a climate change, uh, major climate change meeting, a negotiation. Uh, and this past year, 2011, it was in Durban, South Africa. Um, I attended, um, I held a press conference between religious leaders and scientists uh, expressing their, their unified concern about climate change and um, the global impacts it will have on food security. Um, if you take a look, the, the places in the world, internationally, globally, the places in the world that produce the most food are also experiencing the greatest extent of long-term drought. Again, Chun James said we are a microcosm. There are buttons flashing red on the dashboard and they're being ignored um, globally at these negotiations. The reason? Because the nations are hitched to the economic forces that drive them. They, very few nations can unhitch from that. Um, and so globally, we are threatening our food supply. How possibly can that not affect us? 
as the image was drawn, we are a small canoe in the middle of nowhere. One of the slides that was shown at this briefing on Tuesday showed Hawaii dead center of the globe rotated by Google Earth. And the rest of the land masses are just a thin border around the edge of the globe when you project down on Hawaii. So I'm sorry to expound so much, but I view this problem of food security from a global level as well as a local level because I live here and my children will live here. Please don't make that mistake. Commissioners, questions? Thank you.